missing and losing fish on a shaky head can be really frustrating. I know because I went through a process for about a year where I was breaking them off and losing them and I just couldn't figure out why in the heck am I losing these fish, why am I breaking them off. Started experimenting a bunch, so I'm going to share with you guys what I did to get my confidence back and throw in a shaky head because there are times where you need to throw it in order to catch a limit or if you're just going out to fish for fun you can catch a lot of fish on it so it all starts with the jig head you got to have the proper jig head and then it's a matter of matching it up with the right tackle and i mean your line and your rod being most important so come in here and i'm going to show you what i'm talking about with the jig heads okay the jig head is really important because that's where you miss a lot of the fish a lot of it comes down to the eye of the jig head the eye is very important. If you think about when you pull this bait through the fish's mouth, things that are going to catch on, obviously you want the hook to catch, but the eye of the hook right here can be uh, an inhibitor in getting a good hook set into the fish. And if you look at a couple of different types here, this is one that I hate. This is one I hate. Uh, this is one I started out fishing, can't stand it now. First of all, it's 90 degrees right here, uh, and the eye of the hook is in line with the hook. So if you look at that, when you tie your line on there, the eye of the hook is in line uh, with the rest of the hook. And then you have the eye that sticks up so far. I mean, it's, it sticks up um, far enough to where when you set the hook, this is gonna catch. If you think about if you were gonna pull this through your mouth, is that gonna catch on your lips? Yeah, it is. And it's gonna catch on the bass's lips too. And what, the, what happens is you'll feel the fish for a second, you feel like you have them, but you really don't. They're just, they have their mouth closed and this hook hasn't set because it can't penetrate. This is blocking the hook from penetrating. So absolutely hate that jig head. Uh, another reason I hate it is because it has this, um, well, first of all, the hook's very small, uh, and you can't really throw regular size worms on it. And you have this huge wire keeper on it. It's really big, so you can't throw a small worm on it. This, this jig head makes no sense to me. Um, then you have something a little bit better, like this one, but you still got, if you see, the 90 degree angle on that. And if you compare that to one that I really like here, this is a Strike King, this is Tour Grade model jig head. Look at the way the eyes are facing. You see the eye of this hook is rotated around. That's, that makes it easier when it's sliding through the fish's mouth to not catch on it. And it's lower profile. This one sticks up higher, this one's lower, lower profile. The lower it is, that reduces uh, your chances of missing the fish. So. Uh, I also prefer this style of hook keeper where you just push the worm up on there and uh, hook it in uh, to the worm, the hook into the worm. I, I like that a lot better uh, because that, that wire keeper can also uh, prevent you from, from catching the fish because it creates a less of a gap in between the hook and that, uh, and that keeper. So if you look at this one here, this is one I used to use a lot. Huge, huge uh, hook tie on there, line tie. Sticks up way far, so and past the worm even. So you're gonna have problems with that, but I really like the hook. I've gone through a lot of them. Trust me, I've gone through a lot of them. This tour grade and other ones like it. Uh, this seems to be, the Strike King tour grade is one you, like, you can pick up just about anywhere if you're in a pinch and you gotta have a, a pretty decent one, that's a good one to have right there. And if you look at a worm like this, I like to have my, my shaky head be about a third, the hook size be about a third the length of the worm that I'm throwing. So uh, if you got a real tiny hook up here, you're probably not gonna hook up too good. Get about a third. And you wanna match up the size of your bait to the size shaky head. You know, if I'm throwing something small, 
fairly small. I mean, this is pretty much an average worm right here, but that's worm. I want to throw something like that. If I'm going to Falcon, throwing a monster worm, I want something a little bigger. You know, I want a longer hook on there. So make sure you match those things up to your worm that you're throwing. That's very important. Now, let's move on to rod and line. Those are important too. Now, another big reason you miss fish on a shaky head is the rod. Rod's very important. You're dealing with lighter line usually on a shaky head, finesse situations. So you don't want to go too heavy of a rod because that's where you're going to break fish off. I like to use a medium action rod. Uh, length doesn't really seem to matter. I prefer seven foot though. Uh, my favorite rod for doing this is a, a Dobbins Champion 703 and I prefer spinning tackle. I can cast it a long ways uh, using the lighter bait. No problems. So you want to use a medium action rod because if you use a heavier action rod with a lighter line, you're going to break off a lot of fish. Plain and simple. It happens all the time. If you use too light of a rod, too wimpy of a rod, you're not going to get the hook penetration because on a shaky head, you've still got to go through this worm. It's not an exposed hook like a drop shot per se. So you still got to give it a little hook set. You can't go hand bone, just whack on them, but you do have to set the hook a little bit. So I like to use medium action rod and braided line with a fluorocarbon leader. That is the ticket right there. You don't have to set the hook as hard with braid and not setting the hook hard, you're, you're not going to break them off. And having this high quality fluorocarbon leader on here, you're getting the invisibility and the shock absorption. Uh, it's just a perfect setup. I like to use 10 to 12 most of the time. I'll even bump it up to 15. If you're on a clear lake, you can go down to eight pound test. Uh, but this setup right here is, is really hard to beat. I like to go about six to seven foot on the leader and no problems. You're gonna set the hook, you're not gonna miss them, and you're not gonna break them off. So this should get your confidence up on shaky head fishing. I had my doubts for a while, but I think I figured it out. Hope this helps you guys. See you next time.